is a war on African farmers, a war on African food security and sovereignty that is happening right now across the continent, and we need to talk about it. Whether you know it or not, the agricultural industry in Kenya, in Africa, is under attack. First and foremost, they don't want you to share seeds because they want that the seeds they sell to you are patented by them, so it becomes their product. Which they have collected all our seeds, all seeds in Africa, and they have taken them to Norway in the biggest seed bank probably in the, in the world. And that's where seed, the, our seeds are. What is the agenda? I don't know. But what you are expected to do is to buy GMOs, genetically modified organisms, plant them, and they are, <laughs> they are modified in such a way that once you plant once, what you get, you don't replant. If you replant, nothing will grow. So you keep on buying to plant. There's no denying it. A war is being waged against African farmers, our food security, and our sovereignty. This war is cunning, ruthless, and must be exposed for what it truly is. This video aims to illuminate the grave dangers posed by the cultivation and consumption of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, specifically GMO maize seeds. These artificial seeds are not just a threat to our environment and health, but represent a much larger assault on the very essence of what it means to sustain ourselves naturally. The risks associated with GMOs are so severe that it's bewildering why anyone, with a full understanding of their implications, would ever authorize their use. GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are living entities, plants, crops, and even animals, that have had their original, natural genetic structures tampered with. These genetic modifications are engineered to serve the interests of globalist agendas and the unsettling visions of certain scientists who operate without regard for the sanctity of life or the natural order. Instead of preserving the organic integrity of these organisms, they alter their genetic makeup to align with unnatural and often harmful objectives. To put it simply, the natural world as created by God is perfect in its design. God placed mankind in an environment where fruits, herbs, and plants were abundant. These natural resources were intended to be humanity's sustenance and medicine, ensuring that people would rarely fall ill, and even when they did, nature itself would provide the cure. The original design was such that humans could lead long, healthy lives, much like our ancestors who lived centuries, even millennia ago, reaching ages that today seem unimaginable. However, this divine blueprint has been undermined by darker forces. The devil, recognizing that the unaltered organic properties of fruits and plants would enable humans to enjoy long and healthy lives, sought to disrupt this balance. Through his influence over certain individuals in the scientific community, the natural healing properties inherent in these plants and fruits were systematically stripped away. In their place, these scientists have introduced harmful synthetic elements designed to undermine human health. This perversion of nature is what we now know as GMOs. Scientific research has increasingly confirmed the dangers of GMOs. According to PubMed, the results of most studies with GM foods indicate that they may cause some common toxic effects such as hepatic, pancreatic, renal, or reproductive effects and may alter the hematological, biochemical, and immunologic parameters. These findings, while cautiously worded with terms like may, should not be taken lightly. The reality is that GMOs have the potential to wreak havoc on vital organs, severely weaken the immune system, and open the floodgates to a host of diseases and chronic illnesses. The urgency of the situation cannot be overstated. If we do not take immediate and decisive action to halt this madness, the future of Africa's agricultural sovereignty and public health is at grave risk. It is imperative that African youth rise up in collective resistance against this threat. We must expose the hidden agendas behind these exportable GMO products. We should mobilize, create awareness through videos and social media posts, form anti-GMO action groups, and pursue legal avenues to challenge and ban GMOs from our lands. Following the example of Ghana, 
where recent legal action has been taken against GMOs. Africans are organic beings, deeply connected to the natural world. GMOs are fundamentally incompatible with our essence and our way of life. The entire continent must reject GMOs, just as Russia has done, where the planting of GMOs is not only banned, but punishable by law. Why then are we allowing these dangerous modifications into our fields and onto our plates? The time to act is now. We must protect our food, our health, and our future. For enhanced comprehension, I would like to present you with the following brief video clips. Today, I want to come with a very important message to you as Africans. So recently, we saw the Kenyan kids protesting the increasing of taxes in order to pay the IMF. And these kids were mad because they're saying that they cannot survive. Their parents cannot survive. And that's why they want to fight these taxes. They fought so vociferously, they risked their lives, sacrificed their lives, they even got killed in order to reduce these taxes because they want more paper money in their hands. Now trust me, I've been to Kenya, I've been to Dandora, I've been to uh, 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 Kibira. I have seen the slums and how most people in Kenya live. But what I want you to understand is that they were vociferous on an issue to do with paper money, but they forgot the most important thing just six months ago when the government introduced GMOs into the country. Now, you need to understand that, yes, the tax issue is a problem. For a country to be milking its people in order to pay the IMF, that's slavery. But trust me, that is not compared to what it is that the issue of seeds is. This resource, seeds, is the most important resource in the world. It is the most important resource to humanity, animals, and life. Water, food are the most important things because when you have those, you can survive. But what happened to in Kenya six months ago is they allowed the introduction of genetically modified seeds for cotton and maize. What the Kenyan people and these Kenyan youth did not understand is that their government had just signed them into food slavery and into death. They also didn't understand that the government had signed them up for a biological warfare together with a chemical warfare because the chemicals that go with these GMOs are ones that cause cancer. And if you look at the cancer index, the countries with the highest cancer rate and the highest cancer death rate in Africa, Kenya comes number four after Zimbabwe that eats GMOs from South Africa that are laced with glyphosate that goes hand in hand with the GMOs. Second is South Africa, followed by Malawi and then Kenya. I have actually ignored the Union Republic that comes tops, but, but their death rate is lower than the four countries that are spoken about. Now, the Union, Reunion Republic, you know who colonized the Union, Reunion Republic. Those people kill Africans. You know this. So, the fact that the Kenyan children did not find it important to rise up when they were being put into food slavery by GMOs, that when you planted this season, you cannot replant it next season because it has a genetic use restriction technology. And when we were listening to the Kenyans trying to convince young Kenyans, as Kenyan scientists, Kenyan business people and government officials, they said that there is nothing called genetic use restriction technology. They were lying. I am currently undertaking a court case in South Africa against a company called Insco that also is present in Kenya as a fast food outlet called Simbisa Brands that has got chicken in, creamy in, bakers in that company i took their food for tests here in south africa together with uh, uh, france and italy and their food and gmos came up positive for the nos terminator gene so the kenyan scientists were lying to kenyans when they said that the seeds will not terminate will not become sterile and people in kenya will be able to regrow these gmos it was a lie and I'm saying, so you African children in Kenya, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, wherever you are, if you're not worried about your seeds, if you're not worried about how you're going to produce food tomorrow, what happens when you become captives of the companies like Monsanto, Bayer Monsanto, Saigenta, uh, DuPont, when they stop giving your country seeds as they stopped giving parts uh, 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 and, and loans to Zimbabwe during sanctions. What will you do? 
What will you do in South Africa right now if the South African government had not gone into a GNU with the DA and the Americans decided to put them under sanctions? Where would they get seeds when 90% of their food is produced by GMOs and seeds that are owned by Monsanto and other biotech companies from America? Besides that, these GMOs are known to be engineered to actually have ethnic diseases. Hence, you will see that there's a current study in America that was talking about the increase of diseases with the use of GMOs and glyphosate. They say that there's an increase in every single chronic disease ever since they introduced GMOs and glyphosate. This is scientific evidence that these GMOs are dangerous. Now, Brothers and sisters, we will cry. And this is one of the cries that we will make as we stand or as we sit, as you sit where you are, there is a law that forbids us planting our indigenous seeds. Passed by the, the former government. And if you plant it, or rather, it does, maybe it doesn't stop us from planting, but you can't sell that seed to your neighbor to go and replant. What we are expected to do, it may not have been, you know, implemented, but it is there. But what you are expected to do is to buy GMOs, genetically modified organisms, plant them, and they are, <laughs> they are modified in such a way that once you plant once, what you get, you don't replant. If you replant, nothing will grow. So you keep on buying to plant. Listen, listen. We don't produce the GMOs. So basically, we have tied ourselves to be paying somebody out there. And because they will have... <laughs> Let me call them brokers in this country. So if the seed is being sold K shillings or whatever number of dollars out there, the broker will also add. And we know that our brokers are also, many of them, not all of them, they are greedy. So the price would be high. And can you imagine every time you're buying, so there's money that is going out of our country, not, not circulating within our economy, and maybe one person or two people or three people or companies that are supplying that seed, they are the ones that are gaining. I'm just trying to illustrate, we need to cry. But God hears cries, and he raises deliverers. Time does not allow me to go further. I think the point is made. We need to cry. He will hear us. Just following that on the issue of the seed, we are enslaving ourselves because we put the signatures and agreed to some of those policies. Sometimes it's the PSs who are signing some of those policies. And perhaps because, perhaps, some of them have connived. They sign knowingly. Others because they don't read the small letters there that are there in the policies. They just are told GMOs will produce more food. Everybody will have enough. They make unjust laws, policies, what we call structural evil that holds us in slavery. Some of you may think I am becoming political. 
Brethren, go and read the prophets. We were doing yesterday a training on prophecy. And we discussed about the prophecy. And maybe we will do a series on prophets and prophecies. One, one, one of the months. Maybe not this year, maybe next year, whenever. But one of the things that we said is that when you read the prophets, like Amos, he analyzes the political, the socio-economic situation. And that becomes the prophecy. Because he says, because of this, God will come through. So when we analyze the socio-economic political issues, the misuse of power by those who have positions of authority, the misuse of offices, let nobody tell me, separate these issues from the gospel. They are the heart of the gospel. They are the heart. My time is up. Let's whether you know it or not, the agricultural industry in Kenya, in Africa, in the world is under attack. First and foremost, they don't want you to share seeds. Because they want that the seeds they sell to you are patented by them. So it becomes their product. Which then therefore means that any seeds reproduced from their seeds become their patent. So they can sue you for giving somebody else a seed to plant. They're taking control of the food. I've said it before. The only reason we wake up every morning to go to work, net net, is that there's food on the table. Without food on the table, you don't have energy to do anything. Once you control the food, you control the world. Number two, livestock. The livestock Act hmm, is another one. I'll sit down and chamboy it for you nicely. That act wants every farmer to have a degree. They want every farm to be considered production. And to produce anything, you need to have a degree for it. So what are they doing? They're coming after subsistence farmers. Your mother, your grandmother, your aunties, your uncles, and you shall go. It's going to be a problem. And why are they doing that? Quote, unquote, to streamline the industry. <laughs> This industry that has been the backbone of Kenya's economy for years and years, I learned that in class 4 GHC, that agriculture is the backbone of the Kenyan economy. All of a sudden now you, this is when you want to streamline it. Cynthia, hmm. tisk tisk. Anyway, that's all for now. It was just a, an awareness post. I will go through the Livestock Act bit by bit and come back to you with more details on exactly what the hell these people are trying to do. In any case, I would appreciate your thoughts regarding the video. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing the video, and feel free to provide your feedback in the comment section below. Your input will be greatly appreciated.